Have you noticed something weird? A lot of the mainstream late night shows have increasingly focused on imposing their woke values on their guests, trying to come up with different labels in an attempt to frame them within a narrow ideological box. And that's exactly what happened with the Hollywood legend Billy D. Williams, who refused to have any of the nonsense and pushed back against the hosts when he went on The View, but before I delve deeper into it, make sure to subscribe for more discussions just like this. So you did start, as Whippy said, in the industry at a time when few people of color were on TV and in movies and early- Everybody's a p people of color. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. well, a black man. Oh, well, a brown skin man? Brown skin man, brown skin man. And early on, you struggled to find work, uh, being offered either stereotypical roles or nothing at all. And you write about it sending you into a depression. Um, did you ever think about quitting? And, and if you didn't, what kept you going? <laughs> well, I don't know. I, um, you know, you just live from moment to moment and yeah. do what you have to do and, and expect things to not always go your way. Yeah. And you just find the ways to be innovative. Mm. And you find ways to uh, counter whatever you're up against and, yeah. and move forward. That is classic woke culture for you. All the focus is put on race and identity politics and they frame individuals through the lens of their racial profile. For instance, conversations around privilege, oppression, and injustice are framed in terms of race, with individuals being classified into categories based on their perceived place within a systematic power structure that they've made up. But Billy D's response caught her by surprise when he said, everyone's a person of color. What Sonny's approach does is oversimplify complex human experiences and reduce people to their identity markers, which contributes to societal division over creating a more nuanced understanding of individuals and their personal experience. It can also create an environment where people feel like they must speak or act in specific ways to align with the dominant narrative of their racial group, leading to a sense of restriction rather than empowerment, labeling people who hold views opposite to the mainstream narratives as problematic or ignorant. But that's not all. They also tried to impose gender identity labels onto the legendary actor. Just watch how this plays out next. I was a follower of Carl Jung. Oh, yes. And, uh, oh, he... I dated him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And, uh, he, he coined the phrase uh, anima animus, uh, yes. and uh, anima being the female counterpart counter of the male self, and the animus, the male counterpart of the female self. Yeah. Mm. And uh, I always, uh, in fact, I was talking about it, and uh, somebody's, what was that 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 phrase, uh, uh, er, the gender phrase? What do you call it? Oh, toxic masculinity. No, no. Okay. It's <laughs> binary fluidity, fluid? fluidity, gender fluid, gender fluid, yeah. gender fluid. Uh -huh. Yeah, and my daughter got very excited about that. Did she? Yeah. yeah. Why? I, I, well, because she's a liberal. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> Those damn liberals. <laughs> See how they started shouting out all the woke phrases as if they're celebrating Billy D joining their ranks, but their reaction is priceless at the end. You see, this culture operates within a set of specific terms and phrases that have become almost obligatory for its followers to use. Words like toxic masculinity, privilege, and microaggression are frequently used in discussions to frame issues of inequality and social justice. These terms have become part of the woke lexicon and their repeated use has created an echo chamber where these concepts are rarely questioned or critically examined. Another factor is the performative aspect of woke culture. There is a sense that using the right terminology is essential to being accepted within certain social or professional circles. And this isn't the first time Billy Dee was bombarded with these terms. Back in 2019, Esquire did an interview with him in which they took one of his quotes out of context and framed him as being gender fluid. He later had to clarify saying, what the hell is gender fluid? That's a whole new term. The actor also faced similar comments when he went on the Bill Maher podcast. He was quick to call out how absurd his line of thinking was. Watch what happened next. I wanted to talk about not people who are complaining about what they didn't have right. or what they should have. No, I mean, again, not that it's not a factor, it's just that life is such a complex mixture of advantages and disadvantages, some that you could not calculate. I mean, just having a bad personality is a terrible thing. I'd rather be black, have <laughs> a great personality, certainly in this year, than white with a bad Get personality. Get off of that. Get, stop that. Stop that. Forget about that. <laughs> it's a stop good, that. You know, you're right. Exactly. Stop that. 
Well, I'll just finish that <laughs> that thought with, by saying, um, like the of all the things that men probably dream about, I mean, you were given a bounty of that, which is attractiveness to the opposite sex. You know, you were a sex symbol. What? You're probably still, <laughs> you're start, probably still pulling. No? Okay. Why, do you, why is that a laugh? I don't know, because it is. It's just funny to me. But as you know, it's true. I see myself as a walking absurdity. Well, I mean... <laughs> That's pure victimhood mentality, perpetuated by a man who is not a victim in any shape or form. All this does is frame a certain group of individuals as helpless in the face of a system that is out to get them, leading to them being less motivated to push themselves to succeed in the face of adversity. It creates a mindset where people believe their circumstances are entirely dictated by external factors, such as race, gender, or socioeconomic status, rather than by their own decisions and actions. What's more dangerous is that wokeism promotes the idea that people are defined by their victim status, leading to a hierarchy of oppression. Those who belong to more marginalized groups are seen as more morally superior, while those who don't are viewed as inherently privileged or even complicit in oppression. This framework can be limiting and divisive as it reduces people to their identity markers and overlooks the diversity of human experience. But Billy D. Williams clearly doesn't subscribe to this mindset because essentially he carved his own path with pure dedication and hard work. He also praises his family for the role they played in his life. Watch what he has to say next. I had great parents, you know, my mother, my father, mommy, daddy, grandmommy. Yeah. My sister, I had a twin sister. Oh. Um, lady. And they were just really wonderful people to be around and, uh, and very inspirational mm. and, uh, and eccentric. Mm, oh, I yes. like that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's important. It's very uh, important. Creative. Eccentric people. Creative. But, you know, we, we were very prideful people. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, uh, we never let anything get in the way. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's you know, um, I... The book sort of devotes itself to the whole idea that you um, you invent, you create. Go along, yeah. yeah. That perfectly summarizes how this legend views his family, and you won't find similar comments from some other Hollywood celebrities. C1's upbringing plays a role in shaping how they interact with others and navigate life. The values, behaviors, and lessons learned during childhood create a foundation for the way individuals respond to challenges, build relationships, and make decisions as adults. Parental influence also plays a key role in how individuals approach work and handle personal goals. Those raised with a strong sense of accountability and perseverance are likely to develop a strong work ethic and resilience in the face of obstacles. For instance, a child growing up that believes they are a victim will never achieve their full potential and continue blaming everyone else, over-realizing their own shortcomings. It's not like Billy comes from a privileged background as well. His father reportedly worked three jobs, and his mother was an elevator operator while studying opera. So you can say that he carved his own path to success. But apart from that, what are your thoughts? Do you think Billy D. Williams made some great points here? I do. Let's get the comments rolling in the comment section down below.